The second question, why you need to use peer-assisted learning? And uh, this is one justification that doctors are required to possess the teaching skills. So this is, um, uh, it may not have been described so clearly previously, but being um, a doctor, we have to be counselor as well. And uh, counseling is, is an important um, skill and which this is a skill which needs to be learned. So doctors are required to possess the teaching skills. And uh, it has been further emphasized by the General Medical Council of the UK. The curriculum developers increasingly consider peer assisted learning as a vehicle to help undergraduate healthcare students learn to teach because they want to be a uh, uh, counselor later on. And important in this is that uh, the uh, the UK in UK, the GMC has stated in tomorrow's doctors that the medical graduates must be able to demonstrate appropriate teaching skills. So this means that this is one of the uh, compulsory uh, learning outcome for uh, medical graduates uh, from the UK that they should be or uh, they would be able to demonstrate appropriate. Uh, teaching skills. So since this uh, uh, learning outcome has been uh, identified uh, by General Medical Council and uh, has been be um, uh, stated as a requirement, so it has become an important aspect uh, in, in, in the UK. So <clears throat> that is, is one reason why, for example, certain medical schools are using peer-assisted learning. The second aspect is that peer-assisted learning addresses three uh, elements of students' needs. The first, engaging learning experience. The students need to have learning experiences where, which are engaging. So uh, peer-assisted learning uh, addresses that. The second, practical and timely support services and third, a sense of community and community practice are togetherness. So these are three uh, identified uh, needs of the students, which are clearly uh, you know, provided uh, by, by the peer assisted learning. Uh, the peer, next point, the peer le uh, associated or uh, peer assisted learning allows students to help each other learn effectively in an informal environment. And this is a very strong uh, point in favor of uh, peer assisted learning that this is a relatively an informal environment. So the, the, because students can be more friendly to each other, more open to each other, as compared to their teachers, and they need, don't need to be really very formal while talking to each other. Secondly, probably they they, they understand uh, their issues better, and uh, they can communicate better in their own way uh, in, in an informal environment. Uh, uh, now, next is that peer-assisted learning uh, can have different forms based on the requirements and based on the limitations and, and the facilities available in, in different medical schools. So it can be implemented in, in different forms. And uh, again, as I said initially, that it is something which is not forced upon. It is for students who volunteer for this. So peer assisted learning should be facilitated by uh, interested students only. The advantages of peer assisted learning have been thoroughly documented in the US medical schools showing a positive correlation with examination performance. So it has been shown clearly in, in the literature, especially coming from US, that the students who take part in the peer assisted learning, both as a tutor or as a tutee, they have better uh, examination results 
as compared to those students who were not involved in such programs. Sir, uh, sir I have a question, please, sir. Yes, please. Sir, you said that peer-assisted learning will be for students who are interested. है. So, sir, if we have to take that, then it means that there will be a small group who will learn all the things. Otherwise, the rest of you know that more of the students are non-interested towards the studies. This is one point. Then, who will supervise them? When they have to learn about the junior teachers and senior tutors, then how will they supervise them? All right. Thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Sanab. Now, so, from the first point, First is that uh, second part of your question, we have not point that how it will be conducted and how it will be conducted students will conduct it. I think uh, when we reach that point, you will understand that uh, how it is conducted. Now, second is that it is for students who are interested. So, this can be our responsibility to create interest. If students are not familiar with the with the uh, the advantages they would get from it, uh, I'm sure if you look at your own experience uh, during medical schools or even before that, there has always been students uh, you know, sitting together, learning from each other uh, in an informal way. Uh, so, we, when we want to implement this program, the first step would be to inform the students about this program, the benefits of this program, and in that way, creating an interest. Because if we force students to, to go into this program, that's not going to help, unless they really want to join and, and participate. And once we, uh, that I, I will be explaining the, how we can uh, convince students about this program. But the uh, point here is that we don't have to force them, but we should convince them. And inshallah, I'll, I'll, I'll answer uh, on this question along the way, uh, both questions of, of the volunteers and uh, uh, if so it, uh, how students are going to learn. If they do not want to learn, then there's no point in bringing them together and uh, wasting time, right? Okay, now at the moment, we are actually using peer assisted learning program or peer assisted learning as, as a component in our different teaching learning sessions. Although we are not running a peer assisted learning program, but we are using that concept in, in different ways. For example, in our problem-based learning sessions, our task-based learning sessions, where students learn from each other. They discuss among themselves they, uh, and uh, they learn from uh, each other. So the peer-assisted learning uh, component is being already practiced in, in problem-based learning or task-based learning. It's also being uh, implemented in case-based learning, in team-based learning, and the project-based learning and peer instruction. All these teaching learning methods which we are practicing has a component of uh, a peer-assisted learning, although we are not calling them as a, as a peer-assisted learning program. But the concept is, is already being uh, used uh, in uh, in different teaching learning methods.